So there's always been a lot of controversy about tithing and money and people talking about it and preachers talking about it. Some people say uh, that, that churches and Christians are money hungry and um, you got all these people with all these opinions. So I'm going to tell you what my mother said. My mother said that opinions are like armpits. Everybody has one, most people have two, and just about all of them stink. And so opinions are that way. Let's look um, at one of these videos that somebody sent me off of TikTok, and um, we're going to see what this guy says. The tithe in the Old Testament law was never once money. Correct and not correct. Um, the Old Testament law of tithing, that word tithe, it's the Hebrew word tenth, it was not... To say that it was never about money is not right. Um, it was not only about money. Um, and I would imagine that's what he's going to go in here. Um, whenever Moses gives the law of the tithe, he is actually not giving something new when Moses talks about it in the book of Leviticus. Um, in fact, Abraham, prior to Moses living 400 and, or be about 500 years rather, before Moses ever was there, um, Abraham tithed and then Melchizedek and that whole, um, that whole story in the book of Genesis. So he's uh, starting off halfway there, but not all the way there. Let's see what he says. Even when the whole last section of tithing was in times where they used money as much as agriculture, it was also always for the Levites or for the poor. Not correct. Um, in fact, wrong. Um, now, it is in the book of Leviticus, which is the book written for the Levites. But if you use that line of thinking, then um, every, every stipulation in the book of Leviticus would not be applied to the whole of the people. Um, for instance, the, um, the laws on bestiality, that would only apply to the, Hebrew, or the, uh, the Levites. The laws on homosexuality, the laws on um, marriage to your... Um, uh, cousin or your sister, or what, that would only be to the Levites. That's not true. Um, in fact, it's not true not just because of that, but what I just said, Abraham was associated with the tithe long before Levites ever existed. Um, so, not true. And that only happened every three years. None of it that the people gave went to the temple. I don't know how to respond to that because it's a 30 second clip and um, Avery's back behind the camera smiling because he gives me these clips. So I don't know the full extent because it looks like this interview goes on. So I don't want to speak to a 30 second clip. Let me just put tithing in a, a very simple bubble. Tithing was the stipulation given down by God through the law that of the 100% that you earn 10% belongs to God. The tithe, the tenth, it belongs to God. Now, he is correct in that it was not only about money. Um, they, they did not buy and trade in silver and gold alone. They bought and traded and sold in lambs and in rams and in uh, potatoes and in squash and in agriculture and all those kind of things. And so he is, um, he is halfway correct on that. As time goes and you see the centralization of money as you get really into Solomon's time and then you get into um, the time of the, the return from Babylon, um, Malachi actually talks about robbing God. And it's robbing God of the tithe. And so that does carry on. Now, here's where we're at in the New Testament. Under the law, there was this law of the tenth, law of the tithe. People don't like to talk about this because preachers are always same. People think that preachers are money hungry. And so I understand where you're coming from, but let me give you a straight answer on tithe and money. Number one, everything belongs to God. The trees belong to God. The birds belong to God. The, the dogs belong to God. The, the, the cats, they don't belong to God. They don't belong to anybody. In fact, you all know how I feel about cats. Nonetheless, um, uh, the, 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 the dirt belongs to Avery's love in that back there. Um, Everything belongs to God. Your dollar bill belongs to God. And so the fact that God asks you to return back to Him, um, He's not asking you something that is out of the question. It all belongs to God anyways, and if you don't believe that, then watch Him take it all away. 
Under the Old Testament law, if you earned 100%, you were to tithe on 10%. As you come into the New Testament, it is true that you do not see this, this law of the tithe continue, but you see the principle of giving continue. In fact, you turn over to the book of Acts chapter number 2. I won't read it to you. But in Acts chapter number 2, the Bible actually says, and when the, the Christians came together and they believed in Christ, they gave all. They gave everything. Um, so I'm going to be honest. You really have a choice. You can either follow the Old Testament principle or you can follow the New Testament principle. Um, what is right? Well, the, 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 the pendulum swings in the New Testament. It swings away from a hard and fast law to God has blessed you so much, He wants you to give from your heart. And so in the Old Testament, there is the letter of the law, 10%. In the New Testament, it's more of the motive of the law, the spirit of the law. Why do you give? It's not how much you give. It's why do you give. There are people out there that um, they give 20, 30, 40, 50%. Some people, I, a businessman um, I read a book about years and years ago actually lived off of 10% and gave 90%. I'll give you some principles when it comes uh, to giving. Number one, as a principle, always tithe. My wife and I, even when we first got married, I've always tithed uh, since I started working, uh, 16, 15, 16 years old. I mean, it wasn't a lot of money then. When me and my wife got married, we've always tried to live by the principle of the tithe. So number one, always live by at least the principle of the tithe. Number two, always tithe from a grateful heart. Paul said in the book of Corinthians, he said, God loveth a cheerful giver. If you can't give out of a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving, you need to really check up on where you stand with God. Because the moment that you are begrudgingly giving what God has, has, has bestowed upon you, where in the world is your mind? Um, so that's number two. Always give from a, a, a spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving that I'm able to give. Don't look at how much you give. Look at why you give it and how thankful you are you can give it. Number three, always know this. You'll never outgive God. God will never ask you to give sacrificially and not pour it back on you. That's not prosperity gospel. That's just truth. Luke said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men heap into your bosom. You will never outgive God. Now, we don't give in order to become rich. This world's riches mean nothing to us. We give out of gratitude. And so the more we give, it's us saying, God, you've been so good to me. I didn't deserve this. I'm giving this back to you. Now, I do kindly fall in the line away from a lot of the conservative people. I do believe, do believe you cannot outgive God. God will always pour into you. That's a spirit of poverty that says, I can't, I'm not able to. I don't believe in that spirit of poverty. And that's not about riches. That's not about wealth. That's not about houses and cars and Rolexes and things like that. That's simply about knowing that God is able. So that's really the principle of the tithe. We've shifted in this New Testament time. It's about why you give, not what you give. Follow-up question. Because you said it's not about how much or what you give in the New Testament, it's about how you give. Mm -hmm. Does that still imply that the 10% rule carries over? That's actually a great question. Here in the New Testament, um, why you give, not what you give, does the principle carry over in the tithe? I would say the principle does. Um, because it does appear to me that... The, the Lord carried that over because we know that the Lord fulfilled um, every jot and every tittle of the law. Therefore, Jesus obviously tithed. And I, so I do think that the principle, I think it not just carries over, I think it expands, I think it explodes. It's not just that you're giving 10%. Now, uh, let me address this right quick. I don't know, when people, when people are really trying to hone in on... Well, I don't know about 10%. And they're asking all those questions. I feel like they're dancing. Um, you've got a bunch of people that just won't hit the truth. Just ask the question, uh, why do I have to give? And I think when you start asking that question, we're getting to the heart of the matter. It's a heart of ingratitude. We're living in a generation of takers. Um, and I've talked to Avery about this. Uh, we're living in an absolute generation where it's all about me. It's all about what I want. You know what? You're a big baby. Um, your life... Um, may be about you, but everybody else's life is not about you and it's not about me. Stop being a big baby. 
Um, God has been far greater to you than you could ever, ever deserve. He's been better to me than I could ever deserve. And when you realize that you don't deserve anything, you will more than abundantly give far above and beyond. So I think the principle of the tithe is a good starting point to get you disciplined to give so that God really can start getting your attention on why you're giving.